I'm gonna try an experiment. I'm gonna try having two types of videos. We'll have Spunky and Decaf. Spunky will be a faster cursory overview of the code. So it'll just be a high level uh, overview for those of you that kind of know what you're doing and are ready to just jump in and write the code yourselves. Uh, the second type, the Decaf version, will be a slower version uh, with live coding, and I'll be doing a line-by-line -line explanation of what I'm doing. So the spunky version of the video will be beginning in the next few seconds, and the, the live coding version is uh, linked to in the comments. Hello and welcome to this new Spunky Kangaroo series on creating a polished platformer. Actually, it's going to be a semi-polished platformer, because I'm not a professional game developer, but a... So this is going to be a full-fledged series covering every part of my game development process from the prototyping stage to the development stage and some of my artistic stuff as well. So this is going to be covering, we're going to be doing this in two stages actually. There will be a prototyping stage with Lua and Love2D, so you have to know those two things. Um, and we're, all, we're going to eventually be porting, to, porting the prototype to a C engine that we're going to write ourselves. So obviously you need to know Lua and Love2D. Um, you have to have basic programming and problem solving skills. Uh, and you not have to know a bit of math. I'd say up to about trig. Um, so if you haven't seen my Love2D series already, go through that. And I'd even recommend writing a few games after that just so you have the hang of it. Um, and you kind of have a feel for how to um, develop games. Uh, with Love2D, just, just simple things. Write, write a couple prototypes so, you, so you're comfortable with it. So, learn a couple things in this series. Uh, you're going to learn how to prototype pretty quickly with Lua and Love2D. You're going to learn C, so I'm not expecting you to already know how to write C. Um, I'm actually going to be teaching you how to do that. And C has a couple of crazy uh, things that are worth learning because it's good to understand how a computer works at a low level, but um, they aren't really seen in too many other languages. So they're kind of hard to learn, especially these days when we don't really think about computers in the same way they used to when C was invented. So I'm going to be explaining this um, kind of from the perspective of a high-level programmer. Uh, you don't have to actually understand the underlying architecture of a computer. I'll be teaching you that from, from the other perspective. So the first part is going to be the prototype, obviously. Lua and Love2D because it's fast. Um, very easy to, it's very, it's a very malleable, um, format. So we can actually like really quickly switch things up while we're prototyping and it's safe, which is just the thing that you worry about when you're writing C code. C is an unsafe language. There's like weird things that can happen when you don't write the code, right? There's this thing called like it, it crash, like you can make your code crash without even meaning to. So, um, when you're prototyping, you don't have to worry. You don't. You don't want to worry about things like that because that's a massive pain, and it ends up being a pretty big problem um, when you're prototyping because you're busy trying to figure out how to make the game fun. You're not worrying about the technology. The second part will be implementing an engine, uh, C, and some compatibility layer. Uh, we're using C because it's really fast. It's one of the fastest languages out there. It's a very clean language as opposed to something like C++, um, which I don't I don't like C++. There are a couple reasons for it. Most of them are kind of not related to what we're trying to do right now, but I like C over C++. I, pre I much prefer it, and I think that it's worth learning C, um, because if you know C, you can write C++ in a C-style way, which is actually results in cleaner code most of the time. Uh, C has a simple ABI. ABI means application binary interface. So at a low level, um, the actual machine code is very clearly defined. So if we wanted to write, uh, if we wanted to do this thing called write a, a binding, we could bind Lua code to call this low level um, C code using the ABI, and we'll we'll know exactly how to do that. We can actually define um, and very easily understand how the C code is is running at a low level. So it gives us more flexibility if we want to eventually add it, some kind of external scripting in Lua, possibly. We might do it, we might not, I'm not sure yet. And finally, C is very portable. C runs on like literally everything. 
well, almost everything. And it's it's like one of the most I I think it's the most portable language on the planet. There have been C compilers for freaking everything. So it's it's really good for that. We can run it on Linux, uh, OS X, Windows, every type of uh, mobile phone and every type of mobile operating system. So C is like kind of the universal, one of the most universal languages out there. So a compatibility layer is kind of a bit that I don't want to have to write manually. The compatibility layer just allows us to do things like draw, uh, draw stuff to the screen, create windows, handle input, um, handle sound, stuff that like stuff that you have to interact with the operating system um, to to do. And if we were writing this compatibility layer manually, we would have to write Windows 32 garbage. We'd have to write X X um, code for Linux, um, and I really don't want to have to worry about any of those things. Objective C, which is for Mac, is is terrible. I don't really like Swift, and and writing writing this fun. It's not very uh, rewarding. It's just yay, we finally figured out how to hack together this stuff to make it draw. And there's plenty of options out there so um, for, for compatibility layers that are already written. So there's no reason to go back and reinvent the wheel. At least I don't I don't find any reason to do it. There may be some, but I I don't I don't feel there's a need to right now especially for what we're trying to accomplish. So once we do that, we've written the engine, we've written the game, we've finished the first 80% of the work, we've, we've, caught, we've written the pro prototype, and the prototype is now uh, implemented in our game engine. Uh, we get to work on step three, which is polishing the game and the engine. And uh, this is the fun last step that is the final 80% of the work. Because polish is like one of those things that makes a game fun to play. Um, the fun, the funnest factor is kind of in, uh, influenced by the underlying mechanics. So if you're, um, if you've got a fun game from the start, it, it'll still be fun. But if you polish it well, it'll be even more fun. We're going to. Be oh, dang, it froze. In this first part, we're going to be working on a proto prototype. Um. And in this video specifically, we're just going to be creating a level and uh, simple physics, uh, implementing this, the physics uh, using bump.lua. So we're not going to be writing the physics manually here. Uh, we're just going to be using someone else's library. And in the next few videos, we're going to be working on player movement, some of the fighting mechanics, uh, some basic enemy AI, maybe a few levels just to get a feel for how it all fit together. Um, but we want to just try to get through the prototype as quickly as possible because um, you want to have some momentum early on so you can uh, get, really get a feel for how the game works. Okay, so to start, make sure you download the bump.lua uh, as well as all the other libraries from the uh, GitHub page. I'll have a link to all of them in the description. And then we're going to start by requiring bump. So. Bump is going to be the physics library, so we don't have to write our physics manually, um, which just saves some time uh, and a bit of a headache because implementing physics isn't normally a fun thing to do. So if we can have that for us for the prototype done for us, like just out of the way, that'll make our lives a lot easier. So start by creating a new bump world. Bump bump uh, has like this 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 idea of a world. So um, all the physics objects inside this world will be simulated uh, and it'll know how to track all of them internally. Uh, so just create the world variable and create create a new world. Um, and then we're going to create a level uh, table, which will be our level structure. So we're going to define our two level functions. The first one we're going to work on is level add elem. Um, so that's going to take uh, a rectangle coordinates for the uh, size and position of the rectangle and a draw lambda. And the draw lambda will just be a function that uh, we can use to specify how um, the game will be the the uh, object will be drawn in the scene. Um, and then we're going to create a temporary uh, table that will just have the draw function. We don't have to track the x y width and height in here because that's tracked by uh, bump already for us. It already handles all the rectangle code, so um, we're just going to pull that out from the physics world when we need it. We want to add that uh, table to the physics world uh, and pass it the uh, rectangle coordinates. And we want to insert um, that table into our elements so we have a reference to it 
that we can use when we need to uh, access that table later. And finally, we'll return T just in case we want to have access to that table now. Uh, we're going to also have a draw function. And this draw function will just go through every al uh, element in the table and call that object's draw function um, and pass it the object's rectangle position. Uh, so basically what we're doing is uh, telling every object in the entire scene to draw itself. And now we actually implement our main uh, love functions. We're going to start with the load function uh, in which we um, I'm just going to set the background color to a gray uh, and add two elements. The first element is just going to be a ground element and we're not ref we're not storing that um, in a variable or anything because we don't really care about tracking that. I mean it's just the ground. It's not going to be uh, manipulated that much. Uh, and then we're going to create a second box, um, a second element that's a box and we're going to actually move this one later. Uh, for now it's this is just going to be for like demo demoing purposes, um, but we'll eventually be adding the player here as well. The draw function um, is just going to call the levels draw function, which will do all the drawing for us. And our update function is just going to be a little uh, demo right now that takes the uh, x and y position of the rectangle of the box rectangle, um, our second object, and increments it a bit, so it moves it around. Uh, it slowly moves to the right and uh, moves down with the physics.